Thank you. Okay, good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the March 18th, 2014 Village of New Paltz Planning Board meeting. It is 7.02 p.m., call the meeting to order. My name is Maurice Whiteman. I'm the chair of the planning board. Uh, other members here this evening are Liz Harshaw, Michael Zerler, and Richie Steffens. Richard. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. And our attorney is George Rodenhausen. Our secretary is Brogan Rose O'Donnell. Um, and we have in the audience tonight our, uh, the village's new planner, Brenda White, from uh, Chatham County. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Georgia, yes. Chatham County, Georgia. Welcome to you. And we also have Mr. Rocco, Tom Rocco, our village board liaison. We have two items on the agenda, as well as some uh, draft minutes to approve. The first is a continuation of the public hearing, PB 1307. Um, and the second is a continuation of a public hearing, PB 1306, which is for decks on the town and country condominiums. Uh, since those applicants are here this evening, I would like to suggest that we deal with that first. That's a lower number anyhow, so we should do that. So would you folks like to come up here, or someone would like to, or you want to just stay there and lay back? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's good. All right, so we don't want you to uh, show your cards yet. Excuse me for a second. What was the guy, was it Rubio who had to do the water thing? Yes, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Okay, so what we have here, you just gave me this program. We have a resolution. So we have to, uh, okay, we have to open the public hearing first. We have a resolution, resolution. We have a motion. So moved. To open the public hearing. So moved. Premature motion. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. Uh, second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I didn't mention that uh, member John Litton is not here this evening. He sends his regrets, and I told him we will miss him, and he told me that was touching. Okay, so um, we have to do seeker, and I might have the application here. Come right over there. Would you get this back from County Bridge? Yes, we got, and it said no, no county, county impact, right? Yep. Yes. Yes, well, I'm, I'm looking for the uh, application to do the secret thing. Okay. Um, are there any members of the public who wish to speak to this application? Hearing none, may I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second that. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Sure. Very much. Very kind of you. Okay. I got a little flustered there. <laughs> okay, so we have here the environmental assessment form for this project, and we're going to make a determination. Yeah, that was very nice of them, of course. Okay, so the questions on this form I will read and tell you what we say, what I think, and others can. Uh, First is, will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use planning and zoning regulation? And that would be no. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use or intensify the use of the land? No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? A little bit more shade, maybe, on that. Right. Okay, so no. Will the proposed action have an impact on the environmental characteristics that cause the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure, mass transit, biking, walkway? No. Will the proposed action cause an increase in the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No. Will the proposed action impact 
existing public-private water supplies or wastewater treatment utilities? No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. <coughs> Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, and so on? No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? I would say no, again. That finishes the questions. Um, it looks to me like this should, should be a negative declaration uh, for uh, environmental impacts. May I have a motion to so declare? So declare. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm going to check this box that says we'll not have any significant adverse environmental impacts. Second. While I'm, I'm sorry? Second box. Second box. <laughs> um, while I'm doing I'm going to see if I can write and talk at the same time. For those who are here, um, this is, I, I didn't say this at the beginning, and I probably should have, but. Excuse me, I have difficulty hearing you. Could you speak a little louder? You can come up here if, if, if you wish. Uh, okay. Um, this is for uh, rebuilding some decks that are on condominiums that were built a long time. How, how, how many years ago was it? Uh, the 80s something. Yeah, so like 30 before years that, ago or something. That. Sorry. Um, and it's really a rather insignificant thing, but the way the law is written, we have to, we've had, had to go through this process. Today is uh, March 18th, 14. I mean. It didn't dawn on to me just now. Why are you only doing these decks? Weren't they all built in all the complex at the same no, time? No, there were fires behind me. There were fires in some of the buildings that were built in the deck was um, laid on and buried. So these are the original buildings. These are the original ones, okay. Uh, and some of them, they are older than my need to have. Some of them have already been reinforced with columns and things like that. These are the ones that. So, George, may I? Okay. Logan, that's the uh, secret determination. Now, George, may I please read the resolution? So, um, this is a resolution of approval for planning board application PB 1306, Town and Country Condominiums site plan amendment, which as I said, is for um, replacing the decks that are already on the building. Um, I'll cut to the chase and say that it is hereby resolved by the Village of Newport's Planning Board that the proposed site plan amendment affecting buildings 28 to 30 is shown on five sheet plan set prepared by Ciro Interante Architect PC, dated July 13, 2012, is it? Is that right? Yeah. Last revised, September 13th, 2013, is hereby approved, subject to payment of all fees and escrow. May I have a second? Yes? You, you uh, gave the numbers of the buildings? Mm -hmm. you that? Building 28 to 30. There's also one on the plan that shows building 32. Right. Okay. I will amend that. 32. So it's 28, 29, 30, and 32? Yeah, yeah. It's spent on on the plan. On the site plan. Shows the numbers. Let me just track out the building numbers, just to be sure it's consistent. OK. So that it just says proposed site plan and then take that affecting buildings. OK. I will read the revised. Resolution. It is hereby resolved by the Village of New Post Planning Board that the proposed site plan amendment, as shown on a five sheet plan set prepared by Ciro Interante Architect PC, dated July 13, 2012, last revised September 13, 2013, 
2000, I'm sorry, so dated July 13, 2012, if I said that wrong. Last revised, September 13, 2013, is hereby approved, subject to payment of all fees and escrow. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Rich. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, uh, um, who, yes. who moved the motion? I moved it. Okay. Can we get two edits in the whereas clauses? I got it. One second, please. Yes. Michael pointed out the bottom of page one it says 2014, should be 2013. Yes, it should. And then first, second line, could you just strike it out? 28 to 30. Uh, oh, all right, yeah, just check it out. Check out Re replacement of plan delivery that supports supports has shown. Right. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now this is a draft, so you can reprint this, and I will sign it for okay. you. Okay, I think we're done. Thank you very much. <laughs> you are welcome. <laughs> it's kind of anti oh. It's official. Seven, which is a site plan and special permit for 46 Church Street, known as Church Street Commons. The applicant's name, I think it's John Johnson. I'm not sure if there's a corporation name, but John Johnson is the owner. Um, it's called Church Street Commons. <coughs> okay. So, um, may I have a motion to open the, reopen the public hearing? Do I call it reopen? So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. Thank you, Michael. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so um, we have a change from the last couple of meetings where we just opened and continued the, uh, the uh, public hearing in that the applicant did apply to ZBA. We have a pending application with them for some variances that uh, some of the variances that we told him to, to do. Um, I'd like to see if there are any members of the public that wish to speak to this item before we get started. Yes, ma'am. Um, well, my name is Beth Dulay, and I yeah. moved to 47 Church Street about a year and a half ago with my husband, and at the time, my one and a half year old daughter, she's two and a half, she's almost three now. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to say that I'm really happy that the building department is fully staffed again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because it's been months. And um, I know that they're taking a look at some of the code and they're going to make some recommendations to the village board. Just, um, I, I don't know why exactly. But um, I would like to, I've gone to the village board and asked for a moratorium on building until that code can be looked at and revised and recommendations can be made and you know they can go through the entire process um, that they need to go through because I think it's really important for Church Street. Um, so that's happening, hopefully. Uh, it's on the road, hopefully. And the other thing, and it's not just me, we have a couple other neighbors here today, and then a couple of other neighbors 
to support this, but either can't be here, and then uh, I think even a few more who feel a little defeated by the whole thing. So they support it, but they're not willing to put any more energy into it at this time. Hopefully I can change their minds. <laughs> so anyway, um, secondly, I think it's really important for people to look at all the building that has occurred on Church Street and see how it's impacted the neighborhood because frankly, it's dangerous around there for many reasons. And one of them is traffic. When you go down the street, I have to pull over to let another car go by many times. There's no two-way traffic because you've got parking on both sides. On my side of the street, and I have a picture of this I could show you, um, is a sidewalk that has no curb and no grass in between the sidewalk and the road. So it's like sidewalk into the road and cars park on the sidewalk. So this is not accommodating the amount of people in the area. So we have like a parade of people at night walking down the middle of the street because the sidewalks can't accommodate them. And then so you've got you have to part the Red Sea to drive down the street. And you've got people who've been drinking and you know they're stumbling around a little. I don't want to hit one of them. I mean, it, it scares me because I don't want to hurt anyone for one thing, but I also don't you know, want anyone to get hurt. So it's, it's kind of the yeah. same thing. Um, so there's that, but there's also, I don't know if anybody took into account the number of dogs that are now in the area because of all the building. There is dog feces from my house in my yard all the way down the street to Front Street. I mean, it's all over the place. And it wasn't like that last year. Yeah. Um, and then there's, I mean, there's other things too, like, oh, just parking in general. You can't park around there, and that's a problem. Um, I know that there have, I've seen people urinating on the sidewalk, and I think that that's disgusting. I think it's also a sanitation issue. Sure, yeah. yeah, so we've just got so many people living there now that, oh, the other thing is the noise. I mean, I, I can't even believe I didn't bring that up first. The noise is so bad that we don't get sleep at night. I mean, we're up either calling the police or looking out the window to see if it's even worth calling the police because if the noise is moving, then it kind of is pointless other than to just document, hey, we're still awake, we're still awake, guess what, we're still awake, guess what, the baby's up now, and we've got to take care of her and we've had no sleep. But there's people, like George, for example, he is a bus driver, and he gets up at five in the morning, and you know, when you've got a party on the street and you're woken up at two in the morning, and you're woken up at three in the morning, and sometimes you call the police, and they'll, they'll break up the party, but you've still got all these units in one building all having parties in the same building filing out of the building onto the street. So there's increased trash. Right now I've got bottles sitting in my yard that I haven't had a chance to pick up. I've got, um, you know, sometimes you walk down the street and there's just a pool of vomit there. And that's gross. I, mean, I, I bought a beautiful Victorian house to finish restoring. We've ripped out all the asbestos in the basement, replaced the oil tank, or got rid of the oil tank, replaced the boil. And we're really trying to make it a nice place to live, which it already is a beautiful house. Um, but just to you know, settle down and raise our kids there, and we pay our taxes so they can go to a good school district. None of us can sleep at night. You know, we've had to move our daughter to the smallest room, and she's tiny enough for it now. But when we have to move her back to the front of the house, we're going to be dealing with her being woken up by the noise every night because we are because we're in the front of the house, and she's woken up occasionally if it's bad. Um, but that particular property, the Church Street Commons, is on a hill. So the noise funnels down yeah. the driveway and hits our house. And right now, the only thing blocking more headlights, because headlights hit half my house. Here, I'll show you like what the problems are with the headlights, because I happen to have a photo I took of our house over the winter. Um, but the, the headlights are funneling down the driveway along with the noise. And hitting our house. So we're avoiding sleeping on this side of the house. Um, this is uh, directly across the street from John's, and this is our next door neighbor. The lights shine and hit all the windows on the side of our house, or illuminate, I should say, and hit the window here and then hit here. So right now we're sleeping in this bedroom. This is our favorite bedroom, but nobody can sleep in it. Um, so we're sleeping over here, and 
you know, it's just, it's kind of sad because that's not really the way we want it. But if this property at 46 Church Street is allowed to come down for whatever reason, because if they build multi-family units up there and that has to come down, then it's gonna blast my house with headlights and it's gonna blast my house with more noise because there's gonna be nothing to block the noise or the headlights right. from the house. So there's that issue. Um, yeah, for the Southern Church. Yeah, well, I was going through some of the old planning board meetings that involved this particular issue, and I was I was actually really happy to see that John said, um, if this board or the neighbors don't want me to do it, I won't do it. Won't do it right. Yeah, and I think that's key. I mean, he said that he's willing to not do this project because when you kind of look at what's going on, um, he wants to demolish buildings, adjust buildings, make modifications, build new buildings, and in the end, he only nets 1.3 apartments. In the end, 1.3333, whatever. Um, so we'll go through all this building and jackhammering and things parked in front of our driveway because he can't get them up the yard um, or up the drive. So you know his lumber vehicles will just park there. I'm going to show you another picture of that. Um, and for what? You know, he he had his chance to build. He chose the way he wanted to do it, and now he's putting an undue hardship on himself and on us because he wants to you know, like finagle a few things and it really doesn't net him that much. And that building on the street isn't even up to code, so I'd love to see that building just be up to code. He'll have all his units in there and he'll have the extra bedrooms in his um, you know, 16 room house that he created, which I think if he just chooses like any landlord, if you vet your tenants and instead of putting like a sports team in one of those units that in the dorm style living, you put the French students in there, like the people who want camaraderie, who are all in a French major or the people who are in honor students, you know, run to those people. I've noticed that the landlords who care and who vet their, their applicants and who hold them to the law because yeah. they don't want it to be a nuisance, they really have success. And so I don't think that reducing that building, the one that's being modified from a duplex to a multifamily, is gonna, I don't think it's gonna reduce the noise for one thing, because I don't think it's the amount of people per se, I think it's the kind of people. I think that there are some really great students out there. They babysit my kids and I you know, work with them on women's issues and, and that kind of thing. So it's more about really just you know, saying, hey, you guys have to be quiet, and if you're not quiet, then I'll replace you. And I've seen that work throughout the village. You've raised many issues, some of which we could do something about, many of which we can't, but I appreciate your input. Uh, we are aware of, I would say, just about all of the issues, if not in specific, mm -hmm. with respect to lights in your bedroom, we've spoken about that um, we know that there are lots of problems with this property. I, you, you know about the lights in my bedroom? Well, I'm no, not I don't. I okay. just heard from you now, but uh -huh. we've heard from other neighbors about about intrusion of lights, both <coughs> from vehicles and from the lights that are on the buildings lighting yeah. the area. So, and you know, part of the problem is that this never came to us in the first place. That's a problem. That's a big problem. And had it done that, we probably would have had a much better shot at making this a more reasonable project for everybody concerned. But it did not. In the interim, some of the code has been changed. Uh, as you've said, our new building inspectors are working to point out some of the other inadequacies in the code, mm -hmm. and that will be adjusted too. Anyhow, we're, um, we, we're not going to take any action tonight. I should have said that at the beginning. We're, okay. we're just, it means that we're not going to say yes we, or no. We're not going to do anything with this application until the ZBA uh, has heard from us. We have to give a recommendation to the ZBA on, on Mr. Johnson's application to ZBA for variances, both for setback and for, I guess, driveway widths. And I forgot what else. I think you don't need those. We can't, do, we can't do the driveway widths. So he wanted a density. <laughs> We have, we have a whole discussion on. There's a lot to discuss here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I have a couple more things that I'd like to.
Um, okay, you know, um, ordinarily we we like to have people speak for five minutes and then give other people a, 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 a chance. Um, I mean, I, I understand you have quite a bit to say. Uh, and well, I have other I, issues, not more of the same. Okay, thing. go ahead. Right. Um, well, also taking down that house will destroy the integrity of that part of the street where we still have a lot of residents who are homeowners yeah. and who still want to feel like they live on a street that isn't just a driveway up to a dorm. Yeah. So putting a road there is gonna devalue my property and you know it won't be as desirable to somebody raising a family. So I'm worried about my property value in addition to it. Um, but also we like living on a little villagey street with houses rather than you know looking up a hill to a complex where lights are just shining down and driving towards us. Um, let's see what else I have here. Oh, why should we be in a perpetual state of construction? I mean, he knew what he wanted to do, and he did it, and then apparently he had this other plan what, that he states in the meeting, so I could, um, it's in 1-7, where he states that he had always planned to switch this building once the code changed. Mm -hmm. So he's just setting us up for never being able to have rest in this situation. And we can't function like that. I don't want George driving my kids to school with no sleep, and I don't think anybody else does. You know, it's, it's stressful, and it, it's very nerve-wracking, especially when you have a child who wakes up. You know, you want, you want to feel good in the morning, and I'm sure everybody wants to. Um, so there's that. And... You know, have you guys, what do you, what do you think about the net effect of four bedrooms? This is not the proper form for us to respond to you now. We're here to okay. just take your test form. Okay. Um, well, it's really just a safety issue, and I would really like to see um, if something has to happen up there, if he, if he is allowed to switch these to multifamily units, if they would explore the, the um, ingress, egress onto John or through Turtle Rock or wherever it may be, so that we can have an entrance um, up the driveway that currently exists and maybe an exit out the other way. So we're funneling traffic so that there's not a traffic jam in front of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I would encourage you to go to the zoning board meetings also where this is gonna be discussed. And I appreciate you letting me continue sure. to speak. Anybody else have something to say? Yeah, I'd like to say a few words about the situation. George, would you I, say the name for us? Oh, my name is George Workman. I live at Boyd Street Church Street. Okay. Almost right across the land, right from one up the hill. Um, I've lived in my house here since 1978. And it was a nice, quiet, calm street at the time. Basically, all the other houses around me were uh, <coughs> my older folk, retired. It was a very nice, quiet street. And over the years,
like to, I was thinking of getting one of those uh, uh, night vision animal cameras to, to take pictures of everything that goes on after that in the front. Maybe I'd have a, I'd have a record of everything then. Uh, but what I like <coughs> to see is one more building up in there of any kind. And in the beginning, when John, I talked to, to John about when he bought that piece of land, what he what he might do up there would make a small park. He has lied to me every time I've talked to him since about what he's doing up there. He's only going to do this. He's only going to do that. You can see what's up there now. I don't like it. I wish there was a way we could have to take those things down and be rid of them. Not only John, but Phil Costa up on the corner where it goes up into uh, uh, that's already high I guess, yeah. <clears throat> and the other one's down the other way, that conglomerate of the, of the uh, there's three uh, houses, big houses that were put up there, and they seem like they're right on top of one, and it, that's loaded with students. And, that, and that one uh, small house that almost looked like a long trailer going in there, they had it up in front of that. More people. Yep. And it's just it's just annoying and frustrating. And I you know, it, it was just about every resident on our street out. There's only a handful of us left on there. And we got put up with all of this nonsense. And I wish there was something in the law that could take care of that. Okay, thank you, George. Ma'am, would you like to speak? Hi, I'm Tessa Killian, fifty seven Church Street. Um, and part of the problem is that everyone here has articulated so well is I think the root of the problem is that the neighborhood and church street are zoned R3, uh, high density residential. That's right. And um, if there's any way that could be changed, there's still enough land left that it would be relevant to change it to a different residential area, especially since a lot of the lots are narrow, um, what's, what's the remaining land. And all these condos and these apartments have been retrofitted into weird flag lots and other lots, so they're squeezed into places where they're not meant to be. Um, and it's caused all this problem. One of my concerns is, uh, we've articulated all of them very well, uh, so I won't repeat them, but um, it's up to can the you know, village uh, sewer and water sustain this more building on the block. Um, we are defeated. I, I mean, she pulled me out of this. I was here at every zoning board and planning board meeting for a couple years and, and worked with Michael on that R3 task force, and we are defeated, and a lot of people People either want to stay, but we can't afford to move. These are our homes. These are our primary yeah. residences. These are not our businesses. These are our homes that we're talking about. And if the planning board and the ZBA are here to protect everybody, including the people who come to you with petitions, please keep that in mind. But the residents, or these are the primary residents, need to be protected as well. So thank you. Tess, I can guarantee you that this is very important to us. It's very, thank you. Yeah. It, it is important. Um, and. You know, there's, what, four of us here tonight? I mean, No, I, I know. Yeah. I know. We are homeowners, too. We live on streets. Many of us live on streets that have lots of moving noise, and we're aware of the problem, and we know what. I mean, it's a college town, yeah. so some of it's yeah. obvious, but yeah. uh, it's, it's the zoning. The zoning really needs to be changed, and anything that could, um, I would be willing to volunteer again, anything we could do to make that move forward or change, I would be Everybody agree. Okay, thank you, Tessa. Um, yes, sir. Yes, I'm Hubert. Uh, I live in 47 Church Street from my life. Yes. I just wanted to show a picture of what it's like to uh, experience John Johnson's uh, construction. So, this is a, I don't know if you see this picture. Yeah. 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 This happened more than a few times. I, I so forgot to mention that. Um, he constantly was having lumber trucks and Home Depot trucks just parking across our driveway. You'll see that this is our car mm. right here. And I'm gonna hold it up. There's a little sign that somebody came at night and put right in our yard, but nobody bothered to inform us that this was going to happen, that they were going to park trucks across. I had a doctor's appointment this day. I woke up in the morning, this was in front of my driveway, this was tearing up the road. You can see multiple vehicles going down the road here. I found out from Kurt that he had illegally shut down the road, put up signs on both ends of the streets. 
illegally saying nobody could go down the road. When I called the building department, um, they called him and said, John, your neighbor needs to get out. And he came to my doorstep and was upset with me. And this is documented in emails to the village. He was very upset with me that I had called the building department. And he told me he couldn't control any of his lumber trucks, that they're just his suppliers, and that he has no control over them whatsoever. And that someday I might need to do something like this, and my neighbors are going to have to deal with it, which obviously isn't the case. And there's this picture. Um, this is some additional sewage changes that he, he performed. This was there for months. And uh, so we are, that road is already narrow. So this cut that road in half. This is right in front of our and driveway. The, so, so you imagine parked cars on either side for getting around. And this is right across from our driveway. So most of the time, it's really hard to get, about, get out of our driveway. Um, with, and plus, I hear there's going to be 38 rooms up there. 36. Uh, 36 rooms. So, and 25 or 24 spots. So the overflow of parking is just going to be on this road. And that manhole cover was not cemented down. So every time a car would hit it, which was all the time, it would slam and wake up. That would actually wake up our daughter in her bedroom in the back. So I mean, and there's there's no way to work. I don't know. I mean, that, that's what we're we've dealt with. That's what we don't want to deal with more. And so lastly, let's just say that. John's plan is completely approved for Church Street Commons, um, then, okay, then there, what can we do? But that house has to come down first because the lumber trucks can't get up the driveway, and so they park all over the street, unmanned. I would come home and have to lay on my horn until somebody would come down to move the truck so I could get my car into my driveway. And that happened multiple times, and it was Home Depot, and it was all these other things, so. Quickly, George, yes. Yeah. I don't want to the fire department also. Um, that little driver that's in there right now is approved. Uh, they can get a fire truck in there. They didn't take into consideration the car that are parked on the street. Mm -hmm. Fire truck will never go up that road. Up that road. George, it's not approved for us. We right. asked, I asked for the chief to give us a letter saying that he's okay with the driveway, mm -hmm. that it would be safe for him. He, uh, he did not give us that in writing. Oh, he uh, no, he did not. And we we need that before we yeah. would go ahead with this. <clears throat> but in the meantime, as I've said, there are multiple issues with the application, some of which can be remedied by the ZBA, and that's his next step to, to go there. And before that happens, after we continue the public hearing tonight, uh, we're, we're going to discuss what our next steps will be with the ZBA. But I thank you all for your I would just testimony. Say, uh, even though there are kids up there and they do what they do, they don't need to lose their life by not being able to get a fire. Of course, but it's first, take care of it's a big problem, yes. Is there going to be an acoustic engineer looking at any of the sound issues up there? I don't know about that. I, I don't know. I mean, there, there would have to be some review that we did not have the benefit of having done before because this original project never came to us. And so is it legally allowed for him to just switch these to all to multifamily? Well, he has to go through a process, and that's what he came to us for. And we said that uh, you have to go to ZBA because there are issues with the way things are now situated and what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So legally allowed, we'll find out what the, uh, what the, what the boards say right now. The code has issues with what he wants to do. And is there, he has to that. is there some sort of process that you guys would go through to make recommendations to John about what he might be able to do to make it better for us? Not what he's asking to do, but for example, instead of taking down the house using the ingress. That will be part of the problem, but that will be part of the process. Mm -hmm. But we haven't gotten there yet. There okay. are still some basic issues that have to be dealt with first. But yes, that, that is almost always what we do with applicants who come to us with uh, projects that have undue impact on the land or the neighbors or something. So that will happen. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Hang in there.
Don't give up. Um, may, I, I'm sorry? Yeah. may I have a motion to continue the public hearing? So move. Well, we can because we're not going to have the ZBA for that. So let's see what we got. Wait, hold, is hold on the move for a second. Let me move it on the wall. Okay, so today is the 18th. The second meeting of April will be April 15th. It's not fortuitous. Now, the ZBA, when is the schedule for ZBA? Uh, the second Tuesday of every month. So they'll be meeting on the 8th. So The 8th of April. April, okay. which gives you guys the 1st of April to make a recommendation. If you, okay, now if the application... Has something referred to us? No. No. So first it has to be referred to us. CBA hasn't referred it to us yet. We're still waiting for the site plan to be amended. Right. It's, it's an incomplete application. For the okay, so for our purposes for, for tonight, let us continue it until our April 15th meeting. May I have a motion to do that, please? So moved. Thank you, Rich. Second by Mr. Zerler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. You can always put it on the agenda for some work Action. Yes. Okay. Right. That you need to do the response. Okay. But there's another issue here, which is who's going to do seeker in the environmental review, All right? Which we haven't done yet. It could be that this is considered an unlisted action, in which case each board could do its own environmental review. Or one of the boards could say we want to do it as a coordinated review because it's very important. Let's do it once and uh, and then do a lead agency resolution and say. Right. What I'd like to know, George, with, with all the um, with all the missteps that have happened both in the original building and uh, and the inadequacies of the application now, what what is the logical route to get to something that will be easier for us to deal with in a positive way? So, which do we do first? Uh, and <coughs> yeah, well, one problem is that we don't have the application he's made to the zoning board because the application we had was to use the narrow street, narrow driveway, leave the building in place, and and just do the conversion. Now he's applying to tear down the building, put a wider driveway, <coughs> and, and I guess he's going to put additional buildings up because of setback variance is requested. I don't know, but. What he's taking to the ZBA is no longer what he brought here. So we're out of sync in that sense. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we need to do is advise him that we need to have an updated application here so that we can uh, coordinate this. I mean, even if he doesn't bring the updated application in now, he'll have to do it eventually. But you can still declare a secret lead agency if you want to do that to make sure that the planning board has the environmental review which is normally the case because you have the whole site plan right. to look at. They only have the two variances to look at because it's going for Right. So what I would, if you feel like it, I would do tonight is just a resolution to the coordinated agency in a coordinated, uh, unlisted action environmental review. I say unlisted unless the street has uh, historic homes, any homes that have been listed on the National Register, which could occur after it was 50 years old. Well, I tried to get mine listed on 1895. When they heard it was Church Street, they laughed. Um, so, because I guess they knew what was going on with Church Street. But I would like to be listed on the Historic Register. I wanted to restore the home. Okay. Uh, Brenda. Well, I don't yes. think any are listed. None are listed on National. I'm trying to think of any of those locally. If locally, I'm kind of. Um, Brenda, what do you think? is going on here and what what do you think the best way to proceed would be? Do you, do you know anything that we don't know about CBA applications or process? Um, as far as the fact that this board has a different application than the other board um, and different materials, I think you're right in, in that we need a completed application. We need it to both the boards. Right. Um, because you're referring to the ZBA, the ZBA doesn't need to refer back to you and then answer. Um, we didn't actually refer. Uh, we yeah. told the applicant. He, okay. made, he made his own application to the okay. board. My mistake. Okay, then the ZBA has to 
get your input anyway before right. they make a decision. But um, right now we're still waiting for the applicant to give us a completed application. And, okay. Something, and so the step to take would be when that comes here, when the referral comes here, we need to invite him to use the update his planning board application so that we can review the referred application. So this one, yes. And, and that's, I guess you can do that. Yes. Yeah. So that's where we are. But I think we need to lead agency, a lead agency resolution tonight. So okay. So that the zoning board knows that either they object or they consent, and then they can't take final action until we complete Seeker. It, what it does is bring the ball back into this court right. so that you can consider what these people have been saying tonight right. and make a determination what mitigations are needed. We well, need the plan to see what you plan to do now. It keeps changing. Yes. I've never seen the ZBA do seeker. They don't usually do it right. at all. Right. They have, that's the past. <laughs> they need it to it. Okay. <laughs> but if it's so if there's something they've been remiss about, it's not. Well, that's, that's a different issue. If it's supporting the review, then they don't have to do it because this is what we're going to do. It. Yeah. Right. And I think that's traditionally what happens because the planning board has broader jurisdiction over the change. Okay, so is the first step then for someone to make a motion to establish, um, to say that we want to do, we want to be the lead agency for a coordinated review? Or seeker, and then we can discuss this. Don't we need an application first? We have an application. Oh, it's it's inadequate, but it's inadequate and not. We can't wait. Anyway, because because it's people have, have to move forward. If we can go on this application, I I would so move our associate agency. Okay, if I have a second for that. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any, any discussion first? Sorry. <coughs> can I just say something? Quick? Yes. So. What's going on right now is for an application that is not yet complete for the two variances that Jen Johnson is this is giving where, to the this is, No, we have an application in front of us. So we're okay. The original the planning board application. That he has not updated yet. Correct. That's right. So right? you're going to okay. have to send a, a letter to the zoning board. The okay. planning board to clear the agency. I'll, I'll give you a sample letter if you okay. want to have one. Okay. And then they have to respond back, which they'll probably say fine. Oh, okay. So this is separate. From the new application. From the new application to ZBA. <laughs> yes. Okay. We also need an updated application from from him to Which he what his he does not want to do until he gets the variances from the ZBA. Well you have to think that's his his not gonna work that way. He, he, planning board has to re right. react to it first. He can't get them to and we have to do Zeker if we do this correctly before he can get those variances. So he has to come back here and deal with all these issues. He, he seems oh, to have, a, I mean, he, he has an idea of how he would like it to proceed, which may not comport to what the code says and the way okay. we, we, we have to do it. So that's really irrelevant right Can we uh, take Helen's question? As a ZBA member, can I get a point of clarification? Okay. Thanks. So I don't quite You didn't tell me if my hair was messed up. I don't know if I should. Uh -huh. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, are you saying that the ZBA would indeed go ahead with its review of the application that we have, or are you saying that we table any of our actions until the seeker goes through, and then if there are variances required, it comes to the ZBA? Well, we know there are variances required. He's asked for so you have a job to do in reviewing that application. You can go ahead and review it. The only thing you can't do is approve the variances unless somebody has done secret. So you can go ahead for a meeting, two meetings, three meetings, take testimony, consider the pros and cons of the variance, but you can't take the vote until a secret's done. And we will be doing the secret. And we will be doing the secret. Well, you'll have to do that the next meeting, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. But in addition to the process, the zone board, the first action with regards to the variances they, is that they have to refer it back to us right. before they even begin their review process. Right. We refer it back to you for secret. No, you refer it back to us for a recommendation about 
the variances themselves. And then we have 30 days to give you a response, and at that point, then you can begin to review that. And now, so the one thing that I'm unclear, excuse me, I'm not <laughs> unclear of, George, is um, they referred to us, we have 30 days to give a recommendation on a plan that is no longer in effect. Now, well, the plan that we have right. is old business. That's what we need to do. We need, we need to update our, our file. Right. But what they refer to us should be the whole application that they had. What the zoning board will send to us will be, should be a referral letter to say, we're referring to you the application for banks. Here it is. And that variance application will have whatever setbacks. I know I put that as kind of sketchy, but, uh, but whatever is completed. Right. They have to get a complete the application. The problem is first. that the ZBA application is not yet complete. So right now, we wait so for we the ZBA have no action. To right, because you don't have a completed application. Once the application is complete, it actually needs to be kicked back to this board for your recommendation right. on your decision. Yeah. Not only yeah. decision, so that they can make their decision. Right. Yes. So sorry. Sorry. you kind of that has to be done before the public hearing is right. closed. We right. make a recommendation, this which one. they yeah. incorporate into all. No, not ours. Yes. Right. See, I, I just need some clarification here. The, the way the code is written, I believe, it says that um, the planning board has to refer the application to the ZBA has to refer the application to planning board. Um, before the public hearing, I think it just says before public hearing, but ZBA, every meeting I think is a public hearing. Um, is, it, is it before the public hearing is closed? No, it's before the public hearing is open. Okay. And so the point, is, the idea is that the planning board has 30 days to respond so that its response is in the hands of the ZBA before the hearing opens. But if they have a hearing every meeting, that's not a jurisdictional issue. We have 30 days to respond to the, to the referral. Once there's a complete application, we get a complete referral, which includes the application itself. But not necessarily an updated site plan. No, but it'll be in the, the application that he, we're gonna make sure that what he gives the zoning board is complete, which yes. will include a new site plan. Yes. That'll come back to us then for the referral. That's when we'll get the update. Or the argument of the incomplete application was that the site plan that we have doesn't actually have setbacks and numbers on it. Um, so we need that, <coughs> we're not gonna do that math. The applicant needs to give us that information. All right. Okay, so we've had our discussion, now we can vote. All in favor of the motion for the agency and coordinator review. Aye. 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 Okay, so four eyes. Okay, so that's our resolution. So you will have to uh, give that to ZBA. Okay. Just the chair. Mr. Rocco. Yeah. Um, I have referred uh, a citizen concern to the board, uh, but that does not mean that the, the village board. But that does not mean that the village board is now prepared to take up the issue either of a moratorium on further development or a change in the code. I mean, change in the zone. Change in the zone. Uh, so I would uh, suggest that uh, if the citizen input to the planning board and to the planner has been sufficient, that you are in a position to make a recommendation to the board, the village board, uh, either concerning the uh, amount of development in the Church Street area, uh, or the uh, whether the uh, R3. R3 zoning is an appropriate uh, designation uh, to have continued in that area. And, and then I believe the village board would be, if not compelled, at least impelled to uh, pick up this issue. May I have a clarification of what yeah. you just said? <laughs> <laughs> I think you said that you got a complaint from some people on Church Street. Correct. 
that has to do with the so zoning. Very narrow, that we're with, 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 with the zoning and the moratorium. Yeah. And you asserted that the planning board has now enough information on which we can base an opinion to the village board. I'm not saying you have it now. I'm, I'm saying that you have enough, in, you have information which is coming to you, and changes in zoning uh, very often would be moved by a recommendation of the planning board. Yeah. Rather than uh, from citizen complaints. Yes, but the only basis that I have now to even consider this as a planning board item is citizen complaints and testimony of a village board member. But we, it's we not like we've done a study. We now also have an investigation by a planner who can uh, assist in providing additional in input to you. Oh, okay. Do we have that, <laughs> Madam Planner? Yes. Okay. Okay, well, you know, I would be happy to entertain this. I don't know what the proper sequence of events would be for us to publish something to give to Village Board to say, this is our recommendation. Um, I thought that they should say, we got this, what do you think? But is that my that you know? just said. I just gave them to this yesterday. Okay. So I have what this is as of yesterday that does not tell me that there's this, any motion right. already so, underway to make any changes or And am I correct that we want to get something from them first before we do this? Or we that be do we have any budget in legal or engineering that would help us to perform the study? Uh, no. We, we have... <laughs> I'm not going to my pocket. What we have is the uh, word from our mayor that even though the legal budget is for the baseline amount. If we need more than that, I think he called it other lines. There are other lines from which the monies can be uh, obtained. My, my reflection on that to him was, does that mean that we will do what we need to do with respect to our legal opinions and engineering opinions, and you would make sure that that gets paid? And he said yes. Now. We have nothing in writing, we have nothing. I mean, in practice, that is what has happened over the last year or so when George has had to do work on referrals from ZBA on other things for which there was no escrow, which exceeded the amount of the retainer. It has been paid out of some line, and I don't know what it was. But it has been paid, and I have every reason to believe that it will continue to be paid. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, we, 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 we have a have an issue. But for now, that's the way it's going to be. So may I clarify one other thing? Please. Uh, in regard to the question raised by uh, Mr. Staffan. Uh, nobody has suggested to me that I present this to you. I'm I understand that. Because I'm your liaison Thank from you. the village board. And we appreciate it. And because it. I made that, uh, I gave them a memo yeah. yesterday in response to a, a concern by a citizen. Secondly, uh, although uh, the, the planning board has not recently been uh, accustomed to either rewriting zoning or making lots of recommendations to the village board about zoning changes, historically that has happened. Well, that's our job. It's yeah, it job. comes from the, the right. planning board to the village board right. when there are sufficient uh, concerns that are. And having a planner on staff is what we need to, to help uh, do And I agree with that, so yeah. I just want to make that yeah. clear. But, I, but, but Tom, my yeah. concern, Trustee Rocco, my See. concern was that, um, that this be done in a way that has the proper legal underpinnings, that I, I would hope that something could come from the Village Board saying that the Village Board agrees that the Planning Board should give us a recommendation or you know, something like that. Is that, is that asking too much? Probably. <laughs> I, I think that what usually happens is that there's an applicant behind this sort of thing that yes. says, I need a zoning change. Right. Makes, does, does, the heavy lifting of, does the heavy lifting of preparing a lot of information, getting right. information, making a proposal. In this case, there's no 
applicant here wants to make a change, but there are citizens who are right. extremely articulate and who, who know what they want and could probably put together, a, I call it a petition, but it's just a request letter to the, to the planning board with some backup and some proposal to it that would say, here's why all the information you were giving today, here's why we need a change, and here's what we propose the change to be. We've already done this, I guess, in some way. A number of years ago, so, uh, yes. no, they don't That's disappear, so. <laughs> but, but, right, so I was going to add that we have a, an unfinished, um, we did a lot of work with citizens who live on Church Street as well as in the other R3 district, which is on, um, right here on the right out west, um, <coughs> West Center Street, okay. and um, it included homeowners and landlords, mm -hmm. and we had a somewhat, we had a series of objectives in that case, um, part of which was to try to address these issues before it got as bad as it has, or as things have moved forward in church. <coughs> um, we can, you know, we can bring in the information we have from that report and see if that helps to any of these issues or make it easier for this board or your board to come up with ways to, to meet their concerns. Um, it, it is, these concerns are were relevant then and even more relevant now, but there were some counter concerns by some of the landlords that may or may not still be relevant, but some of them might, and so we should think about those either. Yeah, I have no doubt that there would be uh, uh, countervailing uh, sentiment on the part of people who are landlords in this neighborhood, so. Well, can we get that to Brenda? So oh, yeah, yeah, I'll drop it up tomorrow. She can take a look at it and maybe yeah. shape it up for the planning board. Yeah. I mean, one of the interesting things is, is that most of the infill has been done. Exactly. This, you know, had this all been enacted back when you guys started talking about it, there was several of these parcels weren't built on at that time. But now they're built. So there's not a whole lot of infill that we're going to change here. Um, well, Mr. Which Johnson, in some ways might, some right, but in some ways this might make it that might make it easier, I think, to move forward with the concerns of the people who slept at night. Well, you know, we said 1.3 units you determined was the most you could put in there. Yeah, that's, that's the net gain is four bedrooms, which is one three bedroom, half a duplex plus a random bedroom. So after all is said and done, we he ends up with very little and we end up giving a lot and enduring a lot, especially if the building doesn't come down first, our street's gonna be just jammed. With I, mean, I would imagine that without variances, but is completely built out. I would imagine, yeah. the way put the little building on the way did. Um, Okay, so we did vote on the resolution, right? Yeah. For the lease agency? Yep. Okay, yep. Um, so is there anything else that we can or should do tonight? I think we're done. Yeah. I don't know if we adjourn. No, no, no. Oh, minutes. <laughs> oh, minutes. <laughs> Thanks for so moving. But, <laughs> so is, did I say we were done? Did I hear that? By, by done, I meant with this application. Okay. <laughs> discussion. I'm from the Sesame Street generation. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and thank you again for coming, folks. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Good to see you again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have to go somewhere. Uh, we have um, the adoption of draft. <coughs> Planning Board meeting minutes of March 4th, 2014. Does anybody have any corrections? I know George sent you a couple of things. I already uh, corrected that. Okay, fine. Are there any other? Uh, Sorry, I'm late. Liz? No, I, I don't have any corrections. Okay. I have a motion to accept the draft minutes for March 4th, 2014. So moved. Second. Second, Mr. Zerb. This is a pattern here, I know. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We are done.
I see some new faces in the uh, audience. <laughs> you come right to hear our motion to adjourn the meeting. Oh, nice. <laughs> that, was, that was nice of you to come for that. So it's actually the exciting part of the meeting. <laughs> May I ask before we do that why you're here? Sure. Um, my neighbor, George Tuckle, has sent an email, I guess, requesting to be on the agenda tonight. Does that make it here? Uh, 36 Maricel Lane. Uh, Maricel Lane? Yes. That would be the that town, be the town. Uh, town of the Oh, OK. Do they meet tonight, too? No. Um, I don't think so. I think, yes. Uh, may I have, um, we, we voted, do we vote to adjourn? No, I'm not voting. It's an embarrassment every time I do it. No, you, you, you made the motion. Oh, uh, OK, I moved. And we seconded it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. all in favor of adjourning? Aye. Uh, Aye, uh, OK. <laughs>